where we manufacture a magnetic sleep pad, which is different than all other sleep pads and all other magnetic devices on the market today. It's patented. And our whole idea of our company was to make a natural magnetic field, enhancing the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, whereas all other products, because of the nature of a magnet, you have a bipolar field, which exposes the body to a magnetic field going both directions. All the other magnetic pads do that, as well as all of the devices that people hang on their body. I remembered a course I had taken back in 1964 from a Chinese MD acupuncturist. And one of the classmates said, said well, what happens if they won't take the needles? You know, some people don't want needles stuck into them. And the Chinese doctor says, ah, no problem. Just get a little shower curtain magnet and put it on the acupoint. It works almost as good. And when I saw all those little magnets around it, it reminded me of those shower curtain magnets. And I said, you guys are doing acupuncture with magnets. And you're breaking the rules of acupuncture. Because acupuncture, you're supposed to only do once a week for an hour or so. Or, or otherwise, you deplete the chi. And that's what we learned in the course way back in 1964. And I said, what you've done here is you've exposed these people all over their body with magnets for eight hours every night at least. And now they are, have a depleted chi, so their asthma is back. Electrical flow is chi or vitality. So I thought, well, we need to prove this up, see if this is really true. Because I had the equipment, it was easy for me to prove that up and prove that there was actually an increased electrical flow by putting a tiny little magnet on the end of your finger, you could increase the electrical flow to that area and the blood flow to that area. Now, Dr. Valerie Hunt is a researcher at UCLA Medical School, and she had read the same information and decided to find out what, what happens to the body when the magnetic field comes to zero and then reverses. So she made, had the physics department make a cage of mu metal uh, seven by seven by seven. She got two volunteer students and put them in there and she had them wired up with EKG and EEG and, and potentiometers all over their body uh, just to see what would happen in a zero magnetic field. And to her amazement, in a few minutes, they began to sob uncontrollably. And these are young, young men uh, sobbing. And she says, what's wrong? And she says, they said, we feel like we're falling apart. And uh, indeed, there was a problem because before very long, within the hour, they began to lose the feeling and, and then the muscle control in their feet and their legs and began to creep up their body until the heart monitors began to show that they were in trouble with their heart. And so she had to remove them from the, uh, from the cage. And they recovered, of course, completely in the earth magnetic field. At what point, what percentage of the earth magnetic field do we have to have to keep maintaining life? So I made another mu cage, uh, this one that had only 20% of our present earth magnetic field, and put six young mice in there, three-year-old mice, uh, three-month-old mice, pardon me, which were very active, and uh, waited to see what would happen. In 15 minutes, they went into slow motion. Just moving around, and you could put your hand in, and you could roll them over, and they could hardly get up. And in the first 24 hours, one of them died. Now, this is in 20% of our present Earth magnetic field. The rest of them compensated by eating huge amounts of food, and they became so obese that they were just literally round, but they never did speed up. They could just barely move around. So this could be one of the reasons for obesity today. People are feeling low on energy, so they are trying to get the energy from the food like the mice were trying to do, because there is energy in the food. Some geologists, they thought that the dinosaurs are buried in a magnetic field that was 300 Gauss. Now, Gauss is a measurement of magnetic field. We're down to four or five tenths of a Gauss now. And I thought, well, let's see what would happen if we put a five Gauss magnetic field back under people. And the first guinea pig was a man with extreme arthritis, who was a friend. And so we made a unidirectional field like the Earth magnetic field, 
only five gauss. Now, to make a unidirectional field, you have to have magnets so close together they act like one big magnet. So it's like laying on a big magnet. And so that the magnetic field is going one direction through their body. To our amazement, in two months, the man was free of his arthritis. And uh, this is really something. Now, I'd had arthritis from a fall for, at that point, 30 years. And I, so I thought, well, I'm trying this out. It took three and a half months in my case because I had a lot of osteophytes on my, uh, on my vertebrae, which is pinching the nerves. And, uh, but they cleared up in three and a half months. So I thought, boy, this is really something. So we started a whole company called Magnetico in 1990 on uh, making these magnetic pads that go under your mattress and enhance the Earth's magnetic field. They actually pull more of the Earth's magnetic field down through your body while you sleep. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we actually draw up more of the Earth's magnetic field up through your body while you sleep because the Earth's magnetic field comes out of the Southern Hemisphere, makes the magnetosphere and goes down into the Earth in the Northern Hemisphere. A lot of people have wondered why the Earth magnetic field is decreasing like it is, because it has been decreasing. It's, they can tell because of the alignment of the magnetite crystals and in the pottery in the early Euphrates Valley is more aligned than it is now, and that's called the study of hysteresis, and and it's used by geologists to determine the age of rocks and and sediments and what have you, and it, uh, there's no question that there has been a decline, and they've been measuring it since. 1867 and they've showed a steady decline of the earth magnetic field. As a matter of fact, NASA made an announcement in September 05 saying that we we're going to be down to zero within 800 years. The whole South Atlantic between South Africa and the southern part of Argentina now has already reversed. Now when I say reversed, that means the, the Earth magnetic field has become so weak that the Sun's magnetic field, which is two-thirds the strength of ours, has overtaken the Earth magnetic field and pushed it back into the crust of the Earth during the day when the Sun is facing the Earth. During the night, of course, then our weak magnetic field comes out again in the South Atlantic. So we're having a back and forth every day, night between night and day. So what happens now when we have a reversal of the magnetic field. If you'll go to your encyclopedia, you'll find that the magnetosphere protects the ozone layer, and the ozone layer protects us from UV light. Now, UV light is what is heating up the glaciers and the ice pack and melting it. And there's a huge hole in the ozone layer in the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic. And Matter of fact, just two weeks ago, the, there was an announcement on CBC saying the seals in the North Atlantic are now getting sunburnt, and they've never had sunburns before. So uh, this is a major problem. We're ending up now with so much UV light, they're even uh, sunburning the seals. Now that's what's melting the glaciers and the ice pack. It has nothing to do with CO2, because... It's been a fact uh, ever since I went to school many years ago that every time we had a uh, volcanic eruption, guess what? The temperature always dropped between one to two degrees across the whole world just from one volcanic eruption. And so CO2 is not the cause of global warming. Uh, it's actually the loss of the magnetosphere. You see, the magnetic field that comes out of the South Atlantic is the belt of magnetic field that goes into the North Atlantic. And so there's no protection in the North Atlantic, and there's no protection in the South Atlantic. The magnetic field of the Earth goes in belts. In other words, if the equator is a short loop, and then as you go further north and south, it builds, and we call that our magnetosphere. And so that's why we're having global warming.